So when did I first aspire to be a leader? So firstly, can I, I think for me as a, as a person, I'm a person I remember as a kid, I was very passionate about whatever I did. I was very competitive um, and I would want to do well. So I remember I draw back to my sports part of it where I was very athletic. I represented the school in all sports I could figure out and I wanted to excel. So that excelling means not only me. Uh, so when I played basketball and netball, I remember I would bring the passion out in the rest. I would encourage them to do well. And uh, it didn't necessarily be that I was a captain, but I would lead the others to want more. So I guess I brought that energy level in and it, it automatically made people realize that they would listen to what I said or they would know that I wanted the teams to succeed. So inside me, I realized that I had this skill in me. So in the corporate world, it translates into me being able to uh, get the best out of people around and as a company or as a cluster or a group, we succeed. So basically, I think what I enjoy and I, I think I love you give a title of leadership is that you have a position where you could let out your passion or get translate your passion into others and encourage them to succeed. Uh, so I'll have to talk about two aspects of it. The first change I think was uh, me taking in a full-time role as as a career professional was because of my kids. So my kids, the love of my kids inspired me to make that move. But having made that move, there's one person who has influenced me throughout and inspired me to make the change. And including the next change is uh, our current chairman, uh, Hussein Isufali, who, who, who was the CEO when I actually joined the company. And he saw something in me, in me which I didn't see. Uh, I was a finance director, right? And, and as Sima was lending itself to that. But uh, he did see that I could go beyond finance. I went into technology. I, uh, I went into process. I even, then he pushed me and he said, you pushed me into taking over role as a MD. And that was in, in a space industry I, didn't, I was not familiar with. And, uh, and that was my first uh, business role. Uh, and beyond that, he has been encouraging me to take on bigger roles. So I think the single uh, person is him. He actually sees, saw things which I didn't see in myself and uh, helped me to believe that I could achieve it. So great leaders, I think uh, leaders, uh, different leaders are needed for different situations. Having said that, some few commonalities amongst that is that I think leaders don't don't light their candle and let others see it and uh, follow, but get the rest of the team to ignite themselves and light their candles and make the shape and the path based on the team's candles. So it's like be getting the best out of the people around you. Uh, a great leader would put respect people, put relationships before speed. Uh, having said that, that doesn't mean they don't make decisions. They do make decisions, but the speed of which they do it, they would also be mindful of the relationships and respect people. Um, the other one is I think that uh, they should be able to listen, get feedback, and uh, make uh, relevant decisions, but be having the ability to open up and listen and get feedback and adjust. Firstly, that uh, at a community level, at family level, we should encourage women to come out and achieve the best potential. So that self-belief, given, given, giving them the ecosystem to actually see what their, what their talents are and want more than what traditionally you expect them to have. Uh, having said that, I'm not saying that you should give up what a woman would love in terms of being a mom and a wife and all that, but they also have talents, you know, and they could use those to be an entrepreneur or in the corporate world. And in corporates and communities, um, I think firstly our skills are different and that should be acknowledged. Um, and have a system which allows us to be our authentic selves. So when we are trying to shape others and encourage others to bring the best out of the workforce, uh, out of themselves, um, women have that ability, but we need to believe and the corporate should allow the women to succeed to that level to make sure that they actually can show their skills. Um, I think the biggest thing is that 
uh, in a corporate or community, we need to accept that the women have to lead the way they can lead and allow a system and the uh, environment and the culture to accept that. So our cultures historically in corporates have been very uh, driven by men and you can't blame it. It has been a male driven workforce. Now we've seen a, quite a bit of women coming into the workforce. So with that, we, there should be a culture change and that should allow the women to be their, themselves. Um, once you have that environment, I think the skills, if we self, we have belief, like for me, I had somebody pushing me to take on these roles, and we have belief that we can do it, then you would start honing these skills and working on it. So the biggest challenge, I, I actually have two challenges, and uh, the first challenge I think I systematically overcame is uh, the battle of being my authentic self and uh, being able, being accepted for it. So coming from the person I am, um, I need to get, i kind of a person who wants things done. And uh, so you go through a phase of being aggressive, uh, assertive, how do you find that balance? And how do you go through, push through that and then define yourself as your true self and get the people to accept? So that was kind of a, um, a challenge I faced within the environment. Other than that, uh, on work-wise, I didn't feel um, too much. But the internal challenge I had was because I came from a functional background and I was very good at running back office and I was attention to detail as an accountant. Moving from operational to strategic thinking was a real channel challenge internally. So I actually worked on it and I had to give up what I was good at to learn this new skill and be able to allow myself to think differently. So that the fact that giving up what I was good at on a day-to-day -day basis, that was a huge challenge for me. So I think I'm still learning lessons and I think everybody learns lessons. It's a lifelong journey of learning. But uh, one thing is that you never know any everything. So you constant learning is needed because if you see, I've done five roles in 18 years and it was all reinventing, learning. Without learning, I couldn't have, I couldn't have achieved what I did in the new role. Um, but the other thing is, I think, being able, having the ability to get, listen to feedback. Uh, listen to feedback, to self-adjust, and then to make decisions. And that was one big lesson because traditionally sometimes people think leaders have all the answers and you should be just not listening to others. But uh, the amazing quality of decisions you make when you actually open up and listen to others. And uh, that was one big lesson I learned, have self-belief. Um, it may be that you may not have it. I had instances that I had doubts and my boss, I was lucky to have my seniors who actually had belief, belief in me. But in hindsight, I think you should have self-belief because it's, there are things we can achieve but we doubt ourselves all the time because I guess there would be a place where there's a woman who hadn't done that role before so you're the first woman and then you wonder can you do it. So have self-belief. Second thing is I would say be comfortable in your own skin because you are not going to be the leader like a guy in a, guy in a suit. Uh, you would not lead the way the next person leads, but you are you. So that's where I encourage people to find their true north. So for me, I'm known as a leader who is straight, who has a heart, who is kind, but who would want things done. Um, so basically you will have to define, figure out what what is your characteristic and your true north and work on it and make sure that you're comfortable with it. Um, and as a woman, I guess you find to try to have, find your balance in having your, your softer side as being, having empathy and also trying to get, make decisions, tough decisions and how do you not be seen as too aggressive, too, too assertive, too, too kind, too, too soft and how you push through that and find your own space in it. It, it is something you would face and the people perceive you in different ways while you go through your career journey. Um, the fact that you should be self-aware and you should be aware of what people do perceive you as and you define yourself and the choice is yours. People have related your, or, or connected me to some uh, superhero and the first time I, uh, one of my staff who was leaving came and gave me uh, this small miniature 
superhero and said this reminds me of you and I asked why he, he said uh, he said you're you're one of the toughest bosses but you have a heart of gold and you are supposed to be kind so and then subsequently people have been calling me this so I've been connected to the superhero called Wonder Woman and not that I'm wonderful in any way but the characteristics some of those kind of people see that in me so I've been called that